Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So you can see that I have got the knife blade here. Now I must stress it is not available yet in the UK. It should be here the middle to the end of the month. This is just on loan to me for a few days and then it goes back to its rightful owner. But I've done a live on the Facebook page and now I'm going to do a full tutorial for you and we're going to look at what it can do. And I can tell you that I am I'm so, so very excited by this. So we're in Design Space. You can see I've got a few images here. Now, I've not tried these images yet, so I genuinely don't know how they're going to go. What I will say is that, you know, it does, this knife blade does have its limitations. Some of the words, so for example, balsa word, is a very soft word, and you want to go... You don't want to go massively big, but if you try and go too small and it's something quite detailed like this where you've got curves, you're going to lose bits. Bits are going to break. And yes, you can glue them back together, but you, they may even end up disintegrating. I, When I was playing yesterday, I played with different Im images and some of them ended up like literally disintegrating because they were too small and there was too many details going on because some of the wood as i say is very very soft we're still dealing with you know very thin pieces of wood and they are soft wood and so you do need to kind of think about the things that you're going to cut and how big they're going to cut so that's obviously going to be a bit of a learning curve so the first thing we're going to work on is the QT. So we're just going to go and hide these two. And I'm actually going to cut him out on balsa wood. We're going to do it on 1 16th balsa wood, which I'm assuming is like 1.6 millimeters. That's what it would mean to me, but it's 1 16th. I got it from Hobbycraft. We're going to use balsa wood today at 1 16th. We're then going to use balsa at 332. We're then going to use Bass at 1 16th. I have to say Bass is my favorite so far. And then we're going to do some chipboard as well. So we're going to go to make it. Now the thing with the wood is the, the maximum width of wood that you can have on your mat is 11 inches. Now the reason for this is you'll see that your machine has got star rollers. And you have to move those star rollers all the way across to the right. So it obviously then reduces the amount of space that you're going to have on your mat. So you can only have a maximum of 11 inches actually on the mat. So you're going to want to cut less than that as well. The other thing is that a lot of these woods come in planks. And so you're restricted slightly because of that as well. And then on top of that, you need to actually put masking tape all around your wood on all four sides. The knife blade will cut through the masking tape, but it's just things that you need to think about. So you do need to, at this point, work out where you're going to put your wood on your mat, how obviously deep and long your wood is deep, how long and high your wood is, and then you need to work out your mat. Once you've worked out where it's all going to go, you can then go to continue. So we're going to set our materials. So we're going to go to browse all materials. We're going to go all the way down to wood. And you see there we've got balsa 1 16th. So we're going to click on that. Now when you first do it, it will come up saying, do you want to calibrate your knife blade? The answer is obviously yes. So you're going to put your knife blade into your maker and it's then going to give you some instructions. It's really easy and quick to do. You just need to get some paper. You're going to put it on a blue mat. You're going to put it into the machine and it's going to make several cuts using the knife blade. It's already set to paper so you don't have to worry about it cutting the mat or anything. You then remove it and you need to work out which of those lines is the smoothest cut. So have a really, really good look and then that's it. It's a really nice, quick, easy process. Now it will say that there's a, a booklet that you can read. It's 
definitely worth clicking on that and having a really good read of that. It's everything you need to know about the knife blade. There's some really, really useful bits in there. So as I say, it's really well worth reading that as well. So it says move the star wheels all the way to the right. Make sure the material is no wider than 11 inches and is secured to a strong grip mat using masking tape on all four sides. So we're going to go and get our mat ready. So I've got my mat here. You can see where I've already had a few trial cuts. So I'm just going to place my balsa wood down. I am going to roller it with my fabric brayer. You then want to get some masking tape and you're going to mask on all four sides. And then your mat is all ready to go. You want to make sure if you've designed it on your mat that you want to make sure that you place your wood in the appropriate places as well. So this is the knife blade here. You can see it's got the same rotary teeth as your rotary blade, so it can only be used on the maker. And it comes with a cap at the bottom, which is going to remove that. Look at that blade. It is absolutely gorgeous. So you're going to remove the blade that you've already got in there. And exactly the same as with your rotary blade, we're going to place it in teeth to teeth and you can then close your clamp. You can also see that I've moved my star rollers all the way across to the right hand side. You need to make sure you do that because if you don't, they will leave an indent in your wood. Now it does come up with a warning at this point to say please make sure that your cut settings are correct for what you've got on your mat because if not you could end up damaging your blade, you could end up damaging your mat and of course you could end up damaging the machine not to mention the wood. So you do want to make sure that you're accurate in your cut settings. So we're then going to let it start. first pass it's now moving on to its second of four passes and there's eight minutes remaining so actually it's quite a detailed you know image and I don't think that's bad I mean so what's that just under three minutes per cut which yeah okay if you've got lots of things to do but then this isn't you know this is a hobbyist thing this is you know making things to go in frames and you know maybe having an experiment with 3d objects so there's lots of different things that obviously we need to learn about the blade and its capabilities but so far especially on this cut although it is a very soft thin wood it's only 1.6 and balsa is a very soft wood so we'll probably see the timings increase as we move up in terms of the thickness of wood and also the hardness of wood as well. So it's finished its four passes and it comes up, and this will come up every time, and it says check your cut. Without removing the mat, ensure your cut went all the way through your material. If it looks good, you unload the mat, and if it doesn't, then you just press your Cricut button and it will cut another pass. How do I check my cut? So this is what I was talking about earlier. When you go to calibrate your knife blade, it will ask you if you want to read about it. And this is where it will take you. And it's a really, really good guide. But this is all about checking your cut. So you do not unload your mat. You're going to have a look. So it says once your cut is complete, carefully and without removing the mat from your machine, inspect your cuts. Use a weeding tool or spatula to gently lift along the edge of each cut image to make sure the cut has gone all the way through your material. Tip. If your image has interior cuts, try removing one of these smaller pieces. If the cut is still significantly connected to the surrounding material, choose to cut more. Click the go button to begin an additional pass. Tip. Each additional pass uses slightly increased pressure. 
If the cut is only connected to the surrounding material by a few fibres, it may be better to unload the mat and finish the cut with a craft knife or scissors. Notes. You may choose to cut more as many times as you'd like. However, be warned that adding one more pass may result in a deeper cut into or through your cutting mat. For this reason, we recommend that before adding additional passes, you check the cut every time. Removing the mat from the machine cancels the option to add an additional pass to that particular cut. So we're going to go and look at our cut now. So I've got my weeding tool here and all I'm going to do is I'm just gently going to move a few of the pieces and see if I can lift them up. And I can see there I can. I can also see that there's a few that may be hanging on by a few fibres. So if that's the case, you have got a choice. You either remove the mat and you do it manually, just using a manual blade or scissors, or you let it go through for another pass. However, if you do let it go for another pass, as it says, there is the possibility that you may end up damaging your mat. And so if you've got a variety or a vast majority of them are clearly cut, and it's just that you may think you've got a few pieces I personally would unload the mat and I would then manually do it. If the majority of them are not loose, then I would let it go for another pass. On this occasion, most of them are very loose. Let me just try these eyes and make sure. They may need a little bit of help, but most of it has cut. So I'm actually going to remove the mat. So I can see that that's cut and it's cut beautifully. I mean, that is really, really clean. So the first thing we're going to do is remove our masking tape. Balsa Wood and I are not friends. I am an incredibly heavy handed person and Balsa Wood is a very, very soft wood. And so far I have, I've got to this stage and then I break something because it is a very, very soft wood and it just doesn't like me. Now, normally the break is quite clean and so you are able to super glue it, but you do need to be aware that when you're working with soft woods, you do need to be very, very gentle. So I'm going to actually remove what I can from the mat first. So I'm just going to grab my weeding tool and we're just going to come in and remove the pieces first and then you can just push through those excess pieces. I mean I think you'll agree that that has cut absolutely gorgeously. It's just I really struggle with the balsa wood just because it is so so gentle. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to very, very gently lift my wood up from my mat and I'm then going to hold down onto my image and we're just going to try and lift the remaining wood up as gently as possible. And you see it, it's split there, that's absolutely fine. In fact, that makes life a little bit easier. And you can even do that because it's only waste. So, you know, you're not going to use it unless you want to kind of hand cut it. We're then going to come in and do this bit. And then I'm just gonna get my weeding tool. I'm just gonna see, there we go. So I've now got my spatula and I'm just going to very, very gently start lifting it from the mat. It's these antennae that are frightening me because they are so, so delicate. 
Look at that. I think you'll agree that that is <laughs> amazing. So next up we've got this unicorn face. I genuinely don't know how this is going to cope because those eyelashes and then you've got these little bits here. I would think we're going to lose this top bit and we may even lose some of the eyelashes. But it's worth a go. We're going to try this on balsa wood again. This time we're doing it on 332 balsa wood and the only thing I want to do is just colour sync everything. So they're all going to cut on the same mat. And you'll notice that nothing's welded, it's all individual. There's no point welding it, it's wood. And also, it means if things aren't attached, they're not welded, that you're then going to be able to move them around the mat. So you're going to get more use out of that space. So we're then going to go to make it. So again, we need to arrange our mat. We can then go to continue. We're going to go to browse all materials. We're going to go all the way down to wood. We're going to choose Bowser 332 and press done. And we can then go and sort our mat out. So once again, you can see that I've got my wood on my mat and I've gone through and I've masked all four sides with masking tape. So that is now ready to go into the machine. Again, this is balsa wood. This time it is 332. So, what seemed like a nice, easy image is actually the most painful thing to watch I have ever come across. So we're on the second of seven passes and we have one hour and 49 minutes remaining. Yeah. Won't be doing that again. Um, it's really painful to watch. I cannot tell you how hard it is not to just pause it and eject it. But we've started and we're going to finish. So, yay! So you can see it's cut out. That eyelash hasn't made it. And this one is going to need gluing slightly, but these things happen and they are small as well. So I'm just going to try and remove what I can first. And again, they've all cut really beautifully. So you can see we've lost part of the eyelash and we completely lost the other eyelash as well. It's just too, too small for it to be able to cope with. But the rest of it, it has cut really, really well. So next we're going to do some writing. So this is quite big. I mean, it's 10 inches by 3.48. In fact, let's make it... Let's just do a width of 2.5. So it's 7.185. Let's try that. So let's go to make it. So let's do it at 2 and there. So then go to continue. So we're going to go to browse all materials. We're going to go down to wood. We're going to go to basswood 116 and go to done and we can then load everything up. So we're on number two of 14 passes and it's 16 minutes which is a lot better than the last one so that's quite reasonable I think I mean it's it's a cup of tea so not too bad so it's actually on 12 or 14 passes but I can see that it is cut so I'm actually going to pause it and then remove the mat so I've actually removed that two passes early because I can see that that is ready so we're just going to remove the masking tape and then we're just going to very, very gently 
lift up there you go perfect I'm then just going to come in didn't even need to go in with my scraper basswood is definitely my favorite wood to be working with I really really like it it's not as soft or as flimsy as the balsa wood and so I think if I'm going to be using anything it's going to be the basswood that has cut beautifully just beautifully so we're going to do our last project this is on chipboard this time now I've got to be very clear with this Cricut are saying that you should only use their chipboard at the moment with the knife blade that is the only chipboard that they recommend so please do bear that in mind obviously we don't have their chipboard over here yet so I've just got some from Amazon but chipboard can really vary and so you do want to try and find I don't know a good quality I guess but trying to find a good quality of chipboard I guess would be like finding a needle in a haystack so we're just gonna have to experiment and kind of all talk to each other and see if we can come up with one that works silhouette do do them and I have got them ordered but I haven't got them yet and obviously I'm sending the blade back so as soon as it's out officially and I have got my blade then I will be able to try the silhouette one or Cricut may release a chipboard at the same time I don't know so this project is a design space project and it's actually a puzzle piece underneath there um, and you'll see when it all cuts out so I'm going to go to make it as always I'm just going to move the items on my mat I can then go to continue we can then go to browse all materials and we're going to go to artboard there's two chipboard settings there's heavy chipboard which is two millimeters which is what I've got or there's light chipboard at 0.37 so we're going to choose the heavy chipboard we can then go and get our mat all sorted out so I've got my chipboard here so I'm just going to insert it into the machine and we can then press cut I don't actually know what the cut time has been because my friend turned up just as I loaded it uh, but I can see it's on 15 of 20 passes for and there's 15 minutes remaining but I don't know she must have been here a good hour maybe but it's looking good it's looking really good so I'm just looking at it and I'm pretty sure it's ready so we're on 19 of 20 I'm just going to stop it because it's actually starting to lift slightly so you can see here that it's cut so we're just going to remove the masking tape we're then just going to lift the board up and then remove our pieces so they then slip together and we would obviously need to glue those and then we would just sit everything else on top and we could glue those as well so I have to say I'm actually super impressed you know obviously we need to wait for it to actually come out and we can have proper kind of play with it but so far I'm really impressed yes there's been a few mishaps obviously we lost a bit on the eyelash there um, and there will be times that things break and you may or may not be able to glue them back together yes the cut times will vary considerably I'm finding that the pass is the, the amount of passes is the same for the material so it's the same amount of passes every time you use basswood it's the same amount of passes every time you use chipboard but obviously the time will vary depending on the design the reason I think this one took so long is because it was an imported design and on closer inspection it wasn't it was smooth but there were a few notches in it and I think that that is obviously something we're going to have to look out for if you are importing things then you are going to want to kind of be a bit careful with them because you may end up with a really long cut um, but apart from that I mean 
they've cut beautifully and um yeah i mean oh i mean for me it's the it's the cutie that wins it for me i mean that is so so detailed those antenna are just so small and yet it's managed to do it and i think that's amazing so i can't wait for mine to arrive to explore new materials with it you know there's leather there's other things you can do they're saying craft foam which i really want to give a go on so I'm super super excited for when this is actually released over here. It will be great. Yes, there will be limitations. Yes, we are going to have to play with it. Yes, there will be times it goes wrong. But I think once you get to grips with it, in terms of being a hobbyist, I think I'm really going to enjoy having the knife blade.